Welcome back to the lab, folks. So today we've got a DHL package, and that can only mean that we got something in from our sponsors, PCB Way, and it's going to be the boards for our little cheap guitar amplifier experiment. Let's get into them. There are the boards. So as I said before, uh, the first configuration is going to be very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'll jump across these resistors, jump across these diodes. And then I'm going to put in these resistors here to set the gain and all of these components here will go in. I won't bother with the big resistors or these ones yet. I just want to see what it looks like in the simplest possible configuration, which is this right here. I'd like to keep this a class B amplifier if possible. So if I do put diodes in, it's going to be not enough diodes to get these two transistors conducting at the same time. But we're going to start out with just this here and I'm going to try and set the gain I'm going to put a 100k here and 4.7k there. That should give us a gain of around about 22, I think. Yeah, 22.3 thereabouts. Let's get one of these boards, build it up, and we'll come right back. Alrighty, here we are. I've got these heat sinks on here. These should be enough. With uh, plus and minus 15 volts going into this, I'm imagining we're going to get out maybe about uh, 20 volts peak to peak before clipping. And uh, into eight ohms, that should give us approaching 10 watts. That will be enough for our little guitar amplifier right now. Let's hook this up and test some of this stuff out. Let's have a look at it. All right, we've got things hooked up here. So uh, let me turn on the power supply. And I'm going to check to see that we have the right voltages coming down here. Plus 15, minus 15. And are they going to the right places on the chip? Yes, they are. Okay, then go ahead and stick the chip in. Okay, now I want to just adjust the offset here so we get zero volts here. I'm going to turn on the power and let's uh let's adjust that which direction this direction so let's get as close to zero as we can get that's good enough for me okay now next thing would be to hook up this 10 ohm resistor here as a dummy load and we'll put a, a signal into it we've got a little function generator hooked up over here we've got the potentiometer is all the way down the power is on we've got the load is hooked up we got one kilohertz going into it at one volt peak to peak. Let's get a scope up on the screen first. Okay, so let's start now bringing up the volume control here. Oh, there we go. Oh, we got a signal. That's full on there. We're getting one volt peak to peak going in. We're getting 22.4, 22.5 20 volts out. So our gain calculation was correct. And that's 7.9 volt RMS. So we're pumping about eight watts into this thing. According to the power supply, we're consuming about 10 and a half watts. There will be a little bit of warm up on these things here and they're warming up just a little bit. And we can see, we can see that crossover distortion we have right there. It's not too bad, you know? That really wouldn't be all that bad for a guitar amplifier. We could leave it just like that if we wanted to. Now, of course, at higher frequencies, that's likely to be a, a larger effect. So let's go up a little bit here in the frequency. Let's bring it up to 10 kilohertz. So yeah, we can see that uh, the distortion is more significant at higher frequencies. I still don't think it would be bad for a guitar amplifier, uh, especially some of the effects that people use when they're playing guitar. Let's bring it up to 20 kilohertz. It's quite apparent there. I would imagine if we put a square wave into it, it's going to get very much different. Let's try that. Yeah. Next thing to do, I'm just gonna try two diodes in here to see how much that actually brings this distortion down. All right, so I've got, uh, I've got these two diodes in there. You can see them there sitting up. And I put in these two bias resistors here. This is the uh, circuit that we now have. So two 5.6K bias resistors going down. And I, I bunched the output in up to the center between those two diodes like that. And uh, let's hook this one up and see how it works. All right, we're all hooked up. Uh, let's turn it on. All right, we're back to it kilohertz and we've got the same output except for that uh, that distortion is much reduced let me get it up there in a scope for you there we can see that it's right here our distortion is is very much reduced from what it was before 
Let's see what that looks like now. We'll bring it up to 20 kilohertz thereabouts. Yeah, it's less than what it was before. And I see we're still still clipping nicely. Let me bring up the amplitude a little bit here. Oh, we're clipping a little bit on the bottom first. Okay, so I'm just going to put in four diodes, but I'll put in three silicon diodes and one um, Schottky diode, which should still prevent these two transistors from being on at the same time. So we're still a full class B amplifier. Well, that's our next experiment. Let's uh, let's get that done. We'll come right back. All right. Now you can see in there we've got uh, all four diodes in. This uh, last one here is a 1N60, and the other three are 1N4148. Get it all hooked up, and then we get the scope up there. All right, uh, let's start turning it up. There's something else come in there. I don't see any sign of the crossover distortion. It seems to be gone, but our quiescent current through the transistors has gone up from 5 milliamps. It's gone up to about 20 right now. We're getting that little oscillation down there at the bottom. Let's trigger on that neighborhood and see what that looks like. That's it there. It's a very small amplitude, about 70 kilohertz. Oh, I wonder where that is coming from. But the crossover distortion looks like it's completely gone. So I'm going to take that little uh, shotgun diode out and just jump across that and see what we get. So let me try that. I have lots of fun here experimenting around. Back again. What I just did, I put a little jumper across the bottom of that to take it out of circuit for now. Okay, let's see what this is like at really low frequencies here. I'm going to get the scope up there and I'm going to try it down around 20 hertz. So here we go. Ah, okay, this looks good. So let's bring the frequency up, see if there's any weird stuff happening. And it's 320 hertz. One kilohertz, let's bring it up one kilohertz at a time. You're just beginning to see a hint of that uh, crossover distortion here at 7 kilohertz. Yeah, there we are. Of course, we get up into 40 kilohertz. It's quite prominent there, but we don't have to go that high for a guitar amplifier. All right, folks. I think that's it. Actually, I'm just going to put it on a speaker and we're going to have a look at the, the same thing, but on a speaker. I also want to see if uh, it plops the speaker when it turns on. Hold on a second, let me hook up a speaker. Okay, the speaker's all hooked up, and I'm gonna turn on the power to see if we get a pop out of the speaker. None at all, that's excellent. Okay, let's start bringing up the volume here. So I'm gonna turn your volume down. We're just gonna look at the waveforms. I gotta get something to protect my ears. So we are at six kilohertz. So I'll meet you back at the end of this. I just wanna see what the waveform looks like with a speaker load on it which is quite reactive, it may change the, the waveform. Okay, folks, I think we're done in the lab. I'm going to take this uh, upstairs and I'll uh, drive the circuit diagram the way we have it now. All right, folks, so this is what we ended up with down there in the lab. It seemed to work quite well. So we've got the three diodes and we've got the bias resistors put in here. And these uh, resistors that were here previously, the space for them, we just jumped across those. And uh, we tried the fourth diode, but we got that problem with the, with the oscillation. So taking that out, got rid of the oscillation. And the crossover distortion is extremely minimal, especially for something like a guitar amplifier. I know it's there up around about 20 kilohertz or 10 kilohertz even, but those frequencies don't happen with guitars. So very, very little chance that it's going to affect anything in that use. So, well, the next step for this then would be to you know, put a tone control on it and put a pre-amplifier on it, and maybe a buffer amplifier between the tone control and the main amplifier here. So if you guys want to proceed with that, just let me know down in the comments, and uh, we'll come back to this in a couple of weeks and design that section of it, and then have the new board made up and see how that works. So thanks a lot for coming out, and thanks to PCBWay for making it possible. Let's see you in the next video. Bye-bye.